Hey everyone. Today, you're going to look at acids and bases again. This is our second lesson on acids and bases, but I'm going to show you a more modern theory on acids and bases. Last time you learned about the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases, which is the more sort of historical old definition. It's the first one that existed, and it was really important at the time because it was the first time we had a chemical explanation of an acid versus a base. But since Arrhenius, modern scientists have come up with more specific and more precise definitions of what makes one substance an acid versus a base. Now, and the new theory we're going to talk about is called Bronsted-Lowry. Now, from an acid perspective, they're actually both identical. Both Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry state that an acid is any substance that's going to donate hydrogen ions give off hydrogen ions into a solution. And I write hydrogen ions, but we know that in reality what that means is hydronium, since the hydrogen is going to bond with water to create hydronium. Now, bases are where the two theories differ. Arrhenius said that a base is any substance that lets off hydroxide ion, OH negative, into solution. Now, according to Bronsted-Lowry, OH negative hydroxide is a base, but there are also lots of other types of bases according to Bronsted-Lowry. And what makes a substance a base in the Bronsted-Lowry definition is that unlike an acid which donates or gives off hydrogen ions, Bronsted-Lowry is going, a Bronsted-Lowry base is going to accept hydrogen ions. And when I say accept, what that really means is bind with. Another way of putting this is that a Bronsted-Lowry acid is going to increase the amount of hydrogen ions in a substance, whereas a Bronsted-Lowry base is going to decrease the amount of hydrogen ions in a solution. So let me just show you why hydroxide is still a base according to Bronsted-Lowry. If I had hydroxide ions in a substance where there was hydrogen ions, OH negative and H positive are absolutely going to join because then they can make water. So hydronium ion still gets to count as a base because it will bind with or accept a hydrogen ion but it's no longer the only type of base. And I'll show you some other examples. So another example besides hydroxide ion that is a Bronsted-Lowry base is chlorine negative. Now, why is chlorine negative a Bronsted-Lowry base? Well, because if I put it in a substance that's got hydrogen positive, the two can come together and make HCl. So this is my first example. I could also write this in a more specific and more technical way to show that chlorine ion is going to react with hydronium ion, not just hydrogen ion, to produce HCl and water. Right? So again, Cl negative is a Bronsted-Lowry base the reason it's a Bronsted-Lowry base is that it's going to react with hydrogen ion, or in this case, hydronium ion. The reason it's going to react is that chlorine is negative, and negative and positive attract, so the hydrogen is going to be attracted to and eventually bond with the chlorine. So not all, all Bronsted-Lowry bases have a negative charge, but many do, because if Bronsted-Lowry bases are going to react with hydrogen ion, well, hydrogen ion is positive and negative and positive attract. Now, let me show you an example, though, of a Bronsted-Lowry base, which is very common, that doesn't have a negative charge. And this is just one you need to learn, because it shows up a lot. And it's NH3. So what happens if NH3 is near a hydrogen ion? Well, it's going to bind to form NH4 
positive, which, even though it's an ion and has a charge, is a very stable compound. And you've seen that compound before. You've seen it when we studied polyatomic ions. It's the only polyatomic ion we saw that has a positive charge, and it's called ammonium. So NH3 is another example of a Bronsted-Lowry base, and the reason we, it's a Bronsted-Lowry base is that it's combined with hydrogen, which means it's going to lower the amount of hydrogen in a solution. Again, I could have written this reaction as being with hydronium ion instead of as being with just hydrogen ion, and I would have shown that it creates NH4 positive and water. All right. The NH3 is going to rip one of the hydrogens and the positive charge off of the hydronium ion and create ammonia, ammonium, NH4 positive, and water. So, whoops, that should be green. So, all of these compounds that I've highlighted in green are Bronsted Lowry bases. Now, you may or may not have noticed, but when these bases react with hydrogen ions, they actually produce substances, which I'm highlighting in blue, that can also act as acids. And that makes sense, right? Because we said that Bronsted-Lowry bases accept or take on a hydrogen ion. We also said that Bronsted-Lowry acids are substances that can release a hydrogen ion. So a bron if a Bronsted-Lowry base takes on a hydrogen ion, then it creates a substance such as HCl that could later give that off, which is why whenever you react a Bronsted-Lowry base with, what, with hydronium or with acid, you produce compounds that can also behave as acids, right? So that's something that is um, a major characteristic of Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases is that they exist in pairs. And we call these pairs conjugate acid-base pairs. And I'll give you just a general example of what I mean. Right? So again, remember that uh, when we're talking about Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases, we're always talking about hydrogen moving from one substance to another. So let me show you some more examples. One example. What happens if I mix HBr with water? Well, you should know that HBr is an acid, and so it's going to donate, it's going to give off its hydrogen ion. When it gives off its hydrogen ion, that hydrogen ion binds with water to create hydronium. And what we're left with is Br negative. Now, Br negative is then the conjugate base for the acid HBr. So in another situation, I could add Br negative to water. And Br negative, because it's negatively charged, could actually rip a hydrogen off of H2O, and that would cause HBr plus OH negative. Why OH negative? Well, H2O is HOH. This bond gets broken. Hydrogen bonds with Br, right? And OH becomes negatively charged, and I've got hydroxide ion. So, in this case, I start with the base Br negative, and I create the conjugate acid HBr. Let me show you another example. We've talked about ammonium. I've told you ammonium is NH4 positive. Now, what happens if NH4 positive binds with water? Well, it can give off a hydrogen ion and become NH3. H3O positive. So in this case, NH4 is an acid because it's going to give off a hydrogen ion to create hydronium, and it produces 
a Bronsted Lowry base because I've already told you that NH3 is Bronsted Lowry base because in a different context, if I added NH3 to H2O, NH3 would take a hydrogen ion, a hydrogen ion from the water to create NH4 positive and that would leave OH negative in the water. So again, recap, Bronsted Lowry acids and bases always exist in pairs. We call those conjugate acid base pairs. So in the first example, my conjugate acid base pair was HBr and Br negative, HBr being the acid because it can give off a hydrogen ion, Br negative being the base because it can accept a hydrogen ion. In this case, in the second example, NH4 positive and NH3 are my conjugate acid base pair. NH4 positive is the acid because it can donate a hydrogen ion. NH3 negative, sorry, it's not negative. NH3 is the Bronsted Lowry base because it can accept a hydrogen ion. So what would I expect you to be able to do with this information? Because I've, it's quite difficult and it is a lot of information. So let me show you an example of what I might expect you to be able to do. I could give you, for example, the reaction Cl negative plus H2O arrow. Remember, these are the reactants. Arrow means chemical reaction is happening. happening. And I would expect you to be able to predict what the products of this reaction would be and then to name the conjugate acid base pair. So Cl negative is a Bronsted Lowry base. It can't be a Bronsted Lowry acid because it can't give off a hydrogen ion. It doesn't have a hydrogen ion. But it can bind with a hydrogen ion. So it's going to take a hydrogen from the H2O, which will be HCl, because H2O can be broken up into H positive and OH negative. So I am left with HCl, and what remains of the water once the hydrogen ion is removed is OH negative. Now, because chlorine accepted it took on a hydrogen ion, that means it's a base, and the conjugate acid that was produced is HCl.